Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things van life and pet care. Skew's mess in the back. Jeff's got tools, dogs move the blankets everywhere. But yeah, we're doing this this talk, I guess, about I'm doing this talk in my van. Um, and Jeff's outside working, doing his gardening thing. And I hope everybody out there is still pretty safe and well despite this coronavirus thing. Um, we've been pretty good. Jeff had it actually back in November of last year. Uh, but nobody even knew it was like a thing back then, but he was he was pretty sick, but not enough to have gone to the hospital It just was like I think a month and a half or something of him like being really sick like kind of like a, Just like a cold flu pneumonia sort of thing, but anyways enough about that so some people may not think that during a recession like we currently have and like we're gonna have is a good time to start a business and I could see a lot of people like yeah that's just ridiculous why would you do that but a lot of people are going to soon probably be out of jobs so I think some people should have in the back of their mind that during a recession like this it probably is a good time to start a business it sounds crazy okay and I could say I've been there done that our last recession that we had in 2008-2009, I actually had started my pet care business. So I did dog walks, pet sits, grooming, training, all things to deal with people's pets. And luckily I live in a really populated area and an area where pretty much majority of people work and, you know, take trips and travel and are pretty busy. and. They love having a pet, but not able to always take care of all the pet's needs. And I have a huge population of aging people as well. So, you know, they could use help with their dog's pet care needs too. So anyways, I started my business and shortly later the recession hit. And I'm still pretty young, so I didn't exactly know I was really in a recession at the time. I just like... Why is work kind of slow and what can I do to get more clients? So in the meantime, I would do a lot of extra stuff. I would help clean a cl house for one of my clients or see them struggling with organizing papers. I'm like, hey, I can do that. So I'd find all these little things that I could do for the people around me just to bring in a little bit of money to be able to pay the bills to stay afloat. And I just stuck with that. And after maybe, I want to say roughly two years, all of a sudden the recession kind of lifted, things got better, and my business was already getting booming pretty good. Um, luckily, having a pet care business, the overhead cost to start with was not too bad. It was pretty low, and I had already a lot of experience. I worked in a grooming salon before. I've had pets since I was like 10 years old. So it was pretty easy. I already worked sales, customer service a lot of jobs like that so it wasn't too bad to make that transition so with another recession hitting um, I had decided I had wanted to start another business um, I've been a pet care specialist for 11 years I love it but I'm just kind of bored and want to change and do something else something where I can grow and learn and just something new and different you know also I have to admit having a pet care business now with WAG and Rover and the app next door is so saturated now in my market to where it's really hard to get clients I have to admit a lot of my clients are through word of mouth but a lot of the new clients I would have gotten I don't get because of the WAG and the Rover mainly um, because everybody who wanted to just all of a sudden walk dogs now signed up for that. So it did, I have to admit, hurt my numbers no matter what you do. You can't always compete with that cheap rate that they offer. Even though you're like, but I have all this experience. And I am insured. And I, you know, all that stuff. This is my career. This is my livelihood. My everything. I have dog training experience. All that stuff. Grooming experience. Everything. It doesn't matter because people just look into an app and it's so easy for them to just go oh yeah I'll pick this dog walker or you know things like that so anyways um, I've wanted to for the last probably two years change the work that I do I wanted to go into another industry but what did I want to do 
And my other second thing I love is van building and I love um, anything HGTV pretty much, like remodeling houses, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I got to thinking, why don't I stage homes? Because I also love interior decorating. And I've remodeled my van so many times also. I've had it for like four and a half years. So that's a lot of transitions and I've moved a lot in my life. So I thought, hey, why don't I become a home stager? Well, as I was in the process of starting to do that and starting, you know, looking into the schools, looking into what does it entail? What can I do now? Then we have this coronavirus thing hit. And I am like, oh my gosh, now what am I going to do? Because I don't want to keep doing being a pet care right now, too. Being a pet care specialist, my work is squashed. There's like no clients because everybody is home. Everybody's walking on pets. Nobody is traveling. Nobody's going to work. All of that. So I'm done. There's no work, you know? So, which is did happen in the last recession of like 2008, 2009. I just had to have a lot more clients to get a lot more work. Whereas in the last few five or so years, of being a pet care specialist, I've had maybe a smaller amount of clientele and I can charge them a bit more because I've had them for so long and increased or because their pets are old now so they have a lot of care. So I, I got to where I knew what I could charge and have to work less, which was great. Um, and I was able to totally survive that way for a very long time. But now when you have no income, you think, well, oh my God, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? Luckily, I do have Jeff, and I help him with a lot of his work. Jeff's my other half, my significant other, who does gardening and landscaping. So, that's still going. Lucky him. <laughs> but, anyways, so, sorry this video is all over the place, but I kind of wanted to, um, I guess, give a little background and a little bit of my experience. So, I also think now is a good time it's a new decade new decade yeah it's a new decade 2020 and so I was like you know everyone said this is gonna be my year kind of thing and then the coronavirus happened and you know what I think it still is all our year I think it's just gonna have to we're gonna have to have more patience be more adaptable um stuff like that so I think we're still all gonna be able to get through this I think in ways in some ways it was like perhaps a good thing so anyways, I wrote down a list of 15 tips to starting a business during a recession. Now, like I said, my last business, I did start during a recession. And it was my first business. Um, all the jobs I had before, I was always like just normal mundane worker or maybe assistant manager or shift lead. So I didn't really like have higher upper management skills. Maybe I did and I just didn't want those positions at those companies. But so these are gonna be my tips to you guys about starting a business during a recession, okay? And I'm kind of thinking about not the recession that we had before, I'm kind of thinking about the recession that we have currently. I can't say or predict what it's gonna be like in a few months, but I'm saying there's nothing wrong right now with preparing what you can do in this time, in this downtime that a lot of us have and in kind of a lot of uncertainty. And I think it gives us something to kind of focus on. And just because this recession and this coronavirus thing happened, it doesn't mean it could have the power to squash your dreams. I think you should still go through with it. It's just you're going to have to be, you know, more flexible, more adaptable give yourself more patience um you're just maybe gonna have to change things so anyways this is my scrambled list of notes so i just wrote this down real quick and thought hey while it's fresh in my mind i have to do a video so number one don't quit your day job new job should be part-time in the beginning so if you are still lucky and still have a job either you're currently working it or maybe you're furloughed whatever don't quit that job because I think when you start a new job, a new business, it should be like a part-time thing because you kind of need, it, it can take a lot out of you and the money isn't quite so enough yet to sustain yourself, you know, like you normally would in the current job you probably have. 
Number two, do what you love. Hobby, passionate. Oh, yeah. So do what you love, whatever your hobbies or whatever you're passionate about. Um, what you have a knack for is a good idea. What services you can provide to people. So, like, let's say you are... Um, really great at organizing you could start a professional organizing business or let's say you're really good at house cleaning you can start your house cleaning business you know things like that um on that too you kind of want to think what is something true with this shelter in place and this ban that we have right now you can't really go out and actually do a lot of these jobs maybe you would want to do but not like you couldn't do it when this ban gets lifted, you know. Um, but think kind of what there is a need for in your area. Don't worry about the money. It will come, you know. They say if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. I think that's pretty true. Um, number three, you might have side gigs in case money's slow to come in. So, like I said, in the beginning of our last recession... I started my pet care business. Um, I did a whole bunch of side gigs to bring in money to be able to support and pay my bills. So it was like house cleaning, maybe running errands for people, anything to kind of be able to get by and to have money to put back into my business to get it farther along where I wanted it to be. Um, number four, have patience. Everything is going to be totally new so you just have to have patience and trust the process and just go with it you know don't let people doubt you don't listen to people listen to yourself you know if you want to do this you got to do it for you nobody else you know number five um write down action plan and goals be flexible with this the timing is going to be different than during healthy economy so everything is got is in a different time frame than normal. So when we have a healthy economy, everything can flow a lot quicker, a lot faster. With a slow or dead in the water economy that we currently have, you just got to be, like I said, adaptable, flexible, patient, you know. Um, number six, research all you can on your topic. Find mentors. Maybe be a helper or intern to people in that field. Um, so by the way, I wanted to, like I said, I wanted to be a home stager. Then this recession hit. So I don't know how that is going to affect that market. Are people going to be selling their houses? Are they going to even be spending that extra money to be a home stager? Maybe not. So, I got creative. What else do I love to do? Organizing. So, I decided to go and become a professional organizer. So, um, yeah. Number seven. Provide a service. Start with lower lower to mid-range rates, gain the experience, then when the economy is better, you'll have ex more experience, and then you can charge more. That's kind of what I had done before, so don't go too low. Kind of look what the going rate is for the market that where you live, what other people are charging, and the fact like you don't maybe have as much experience, or that you're kind of starting out, maybe you can charge a normal rate, but after so many services, say after so many hours or so, or a punch card or something, you can like adjust your rate a little bit or give them a little bit of a discount or refer a friend discount, things like that where you can still bring in a decent amount of money, but still be flexible with the economy and the money that people do and don't have currently. Number eight, go to school or certification classes online. Some even have payments and installment methods. So if you have to, or if you can, maybe you should, take some um, classes in your field that you want to do. A lot of them nowadays are online, which is awesome because you can go at your own pace. You can get it done in four to 12 weeks which is probably going to be roughly the time when this ban gets lifted of uh, this coronavirus thing. So that'll be kind of cool. 
Um, uh, a lot of them have payment plans, so maybe it's only $100 a month or $50 a month, or you can put on a credit card, that sort of thing. So that's kind of good. Um, number nine, try to do it with the basics, low overhead. So uh, if you could try to start your business with the basics, I would say you at least need insurances, business cards, marketing materials, a website, business license, and possibly a certificate, depending on the field of work you want to go into. Some of them, you really don't have to have a certificate, but I think it kind of helps, or you can at least say you're working on it and that you are in such and such school and you're, you know, you could word it in a really pretty way. I don't know how, but you can say you are in school for it, things like that, and you're gaining the experience. So maybe that's another reason you could charge a little bit lower rate. Say, I understand I'm not certified, but I'm almost there. So, you know. Um, number 10, be confident, genuine, caring, customer service goes a long way in these times. Everybody is having a really hard, difficult time. And even you being just a little bit nicer than everybody else, a little bit more caring and understanding can go a long way, you know, especially if you provide a service, you know. Um, number 11, just do it and realize any business will take a few years to thrive, so stick with it. There's no better time than in the now. It's true. Uh, when I started my last business, I want to say... Maybe it took roughly two years until maybe even three to where I was like, wow, it really took off. Um, true, it was my first business, so it was like learning and, you know, knowing how much you can and can't do and the workload. And my work, too, is seasonal, so it's a little tricky because there would be certain times of the year being a pet care specialist that people are going to need a lot more pet sits or a lot more dog walks, things like that. So it can be seasonal. So some work you have to understand too will be seasonal. Um, but yeah, just stick with it. Just just do it. You know, you're never going to get younger. So you might as well try and do it now. Number 12. One customer can equal five plus by the end of the day. So give everyone good service. It's true. I have that with a lot of my clients where I have one client. She must have referred me to like... I don't know, 10 or 15 other people by now. And it's amazing. I'm, and it's great because all her friends, everyone she's referred me to, have all been like such sweet, nice people. And I'm like so thankful. And it's just like amazing when that happens, you know? Um, number 13, don't sell yourself too short. Be fair to your future self. What that means is if you decide right now you're going to do a service for $30 an hour, and then you have to realize when the economy is doing better, how you're going to increase that rate. So some people get so used to it being $30, you know, you can't be, you, you got to like be able to pay your bills. You got to be able to live where you live, you know. So you kind of have to have a little flexibility right now because of the economy. But it depends on your clientele. Don't let a lot of those rich people fool you that they don't have money when a lot of them still do. A lot of them, this does not affect them. It's certain like lower incomes, middle class, that usually these recessions affect that clientele base, I would say. Um, number 14, get the word out. Craigslist, the app next door, friends, family, church groups, etc. So, when you're ready to start getting clients, um, get, or even slightly before, even right now, plant the seed in everybody's head. First of all, know what you're gonna be doing. So me, I want to be a professional organizer. So get that word out. A lot of people who already know me pretty well are like, that's so good, you're gonna make that change. You're so good at that. I can totally see you doing it. So it helped, that's pretty cool, you know? So they'll be like, oh, I'll definitely send some people your way. Or, oh, I know someone who could use your services. Like, things like that. So it's great to already plant that seed in everybody's head, you know? Um, plus, during a recession, everybody wants to hurry up and try and get you business. Like, oh, you gotta survive. And so, you know, they, they want to hurry up and, like, get you going and everything. Number 15, get business set up now so you can hit the ground running once this ban is lifted. 
So what I mean by that is try and get all your ducks in a row. Doing a video. I'm doing a video. <laughs> um, so what that means is try and get all your ducks in a row right now. Have your marketing materials ready, your website, your business license, your insurances. Um, have all that like up and running. So as soon as this ban gets lifted, if you're ready, um, or the stay in place ban, whatever it's called where you are, as soon as this ban gets lifted, you can just hit the ground running and get out there and start making money. You know, um, some fields are going to be a little slower than others. Um, but yeah, I would say right now is kind of the good time where you have a lot less distractions, a lot less things happening and going on. And yes, with some business, other businesses close, it can affect what your startup issues are going to be. And depending on what field you're going to be going into, it can kind of affect that, you know. But networking is like the best thing, you know. And like for advertising, yeah, there is the app next door. There's um, Craigslist. There's like Andrew's List. Uh, there's like Care.com. I don't know. There's a lot of those kind of lists companies, websites that you can kind of get onto and even in your specific field and they can help do a little networking for you as well. There's Yelp also. So once you create a Yelp page kind of that works. Um, and some things maybe you want to start right before you're ready to get clients. So maybe you can do right now, like your website, your business cards, marketing materials, um, things like that, set up all your paperwork. Uh, maybe you could do some practice stuff with friends and family, like they can call you and pretend they're gonna be a client. You could role play, I think, to get familiar with this um, before you get out there and having to do it. Um, also, yeah, so maybe you would start up maybe your business insurances, um, for example, like right before you start taking clients, cause then that's another fee that you don't want to keep paying right now when you're not really bringing in any clients or having to use that insurance, let's just say. Um, and when it comes to your business expenses like say a website web hosting um, the insurances things like that maybe start off don't pay that out for the year start out paying it monthly yes it's gonna cost a little bit more than if you had paid it out for the year but right now it would be easier to have maybe a 20 or 30 or $15 bill than pay out three or four hundred dollars out for the year for either like the website web hosting or say business insurances so it really depends um, as far as if you have to get a loan for your business like let's say you let's just say you wanted to start a tree company and you wanted to get a loan to buy the trucks I don't know how the banks are about all that stuff right now I I can't say I've never had to get out a loan I don't know I don't even think the banks would know right now um, yeah Wait, give me just a couple minutes. <laughs> you can warm it up now if you want, if you wanted to. I'm almost done. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure how the banks would be to be able to get a loan and stuff like that right now, currently. So, I mean, but you can start already planning and doing what you can. There's always a bunch of little steps, little things that you can take care of now while we have some downtime you know, and less maybe restrictions and stuff, you know. Um, I think I've given you guys so much information there. And if you had any more questions or any other tips, obviously put them in the comments. I am maybe going to end up making a, a part two. I may come up with more ideas. Um, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> But thank you guys always for watching, and hello to new viewers. Um, yeah, I guess I'm going to get going because we got more stuff we have to go do today. So take care, everybody, and I hope you guys are all safe and doing well and feeling okay and everything. 
Um, you see Kaylee over there. I don't know if you can see Gavin. He's like right over there. And there's Kaylee, my like husky wolf mix. And then Spike's outside going potty, in case you guys were wondering. Um, but I will talk to you guys all later. And I wish you guys all the best in your endeavors, whatever they may be. So take care. And hopefully you guys are also enjoying this like downtime, calmer time of life right now. But yes, hit you guys up later. Bye. Oh, if you like this video, you know, there's like this thumbs up button you can hit. And I'm probably going to put out more videos about I guess life in general or about whatever I can right now, you know, so and probably about my new endeavors, about starting a new business in a recession, things like that. So if you want to know more about those things and more van life videos and pet care stuff, it would be a good idea to like subscribe cause, and then hit the bell so you know whenever I do post because it is kind of random. So sorry about that. But, um, oh yeah, now you can see Gavin. There he is. This is your handsome red dog. <laughs> Alright, talk to you guys later. Bye.